Welcome back. This is Morning Express and we were talking about the BBI report and the push for a referendum and the ongoing, or rather the soon to be launched uh, collection of one million signatures. Now we were having this discussion with MP for Saboti Caleb Hamisi and Franklin Mkwanja, CMD Executive Director, was about to tell us about how we have failed to follow the con what the constitution stipulates as, far as stipulates as far as the process is concerned. So I'll allow you, Mr. Mukwanja, to finish your thought. Thank you. Um, my, my point has remained that we, the process is really clear on, yes. on how to uh, introduce a constitution to be in parliament. Uh, the process for a referendum is also quite clear and it's provided for in the constitution. I think in, in regard to the process, mm. it is the laziest argument to say or oh, this is being rushed through or not, even not looking at what Honorable Missy said, mm -hmm. that we began this conversation way back in uh, 2017, 17, 2018. Yes. Uh, now, the high has evolved into a, a constitutional amendment proposal. And the question we should be asking is, are the timelines provided for the constitution uh, being adhered to? Is Parliament, you know, uh, responding to its own uh, standing orders on how to go about a constitutional amendment bill? So for me, the most straightforward uh, thing is the process. Mm -hmm. The whether we will have, which which is remotely possible, um, a contested a referendum or not, we need to look at the content and looking at the content, uh, not to achieve a, a non-contested referendum but to make sure that whatever the outcome, whether Kenyans vote yes, whether Kenyans vote no, yes. the referendum yes. does not become a builder uh, to a chaotic situation, to the ethnic tensions, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in 2022 general elections. Uh, because as I say, and which uh, no politician will, uh, will, 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 will refuse, is that the referendum is a decoy. The whole process of a referendum is a decoy, the whole idea is that the political class is positioning to have control of the 2022 electoral process. And, and that is where Kenyans need to really focus and to make sure that either all the reforms or most of the reforms that are being proposed under any framework, whether a Kuru court comes back with his Mbuza Biziko or whether the those that Honorable Missy thinks are opposed to the BBIA process, as someone enough courage to make come up with their own outfit, yes. The process goes on. We must make sure that all or most of the reforms that are coming are people centered, mm -hmm. are issue based, are really structured in a way that we solve the real national challenges that face this country and not just looking at the issue of positioning in 2022 mm -hmm. and also look at how cohesive. And this country will be uh, post 2022 general election. Okay. Honorable Amisi, there has been concern as well about the cost of going to a referendum at this time where we are facing economic challenges and obviously the, the, the COVID 19 pandemic cannot be ignored. So, what do you say to that given that, um, uh, you know, the figures that are coming up in terms of what this would cost a country is what's something that has been deemed unnecessary at this time by some? Yeah, you know, democracy comes with its expenses mm -hmm. and the referendum process is part of uh, tenets of democracy. Now, if you are going to postpone an uh, election, for example, uh, in Britain that there is no money to carry out an election, mm -hmm. is that a possibility in a democratic nation? Uh, so you cannot use the excuse of funds uh, to stop uh, a process that is so democratic like a referendum. And uh, even though you are questioning about the amount, yeah. uh, the question would be, how much are we talking about? Has anybody come up or has IBC come up with a clear figure? Because we see a lot of figures being thrown uh, around in the media uh, mm -hmm. and what have you. But is that the correct figure? The uh, IBC a mentioned figure so 14 can, billion being can, the possible we can, figure. We can be arguing we can be arguing from a definite point of knowledge. Mm. The IBC yes, did come so, up with a figure. They said it would po possibly cost 14 billion to hold that referendum, while the form, uh, you know, Honorable Raila Odinga said it might cost 2 billion. Then there was that b back and forth between the two. What do you make of that? Because at the end of the day, it would cost at least uh, 
upwards of 10 billion because that is a figure that has been used in a past referendum. So what say you about that? Yes, but you see the, the figures that are being thrown now is to scare away Kenyans from having the referendum. There okay. is all reasons uh, being uh, sold to Kenyans that look, it will even be more expensive. They'll give a figure that is looking billions of billions of shillings so that Kenyans get scared away with BBI. All these things has been machinations to try and uh, sell anti-BBI message to Kenyans. Okay. But is, 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 the, is, the, is the figure been verified? Yes, the IBC can say 14 million. Mm -hmm. what, what constitutes this 14 million? What is it? Is it also having allowance for stealing? Is it just it can be 2 million, but the rest is for stealing? Do you know what has been happening in this country that people, people in, 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 uh, um, uh, you know, throw out big figures? And, 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 uh, and they give an allowance for, for some uh, money to be stolen. But the real figures is, is it in a normal scale, you do not expect a referendum to take uh, such uh, you know, uh, obnoxious amount of money. And um, number two, being a, a, a constitutional change, a document that is going to guide this nation. And uh, this is a democracy. You need to have some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, an expenses. Democracy is not cheap. Mm. In, in the US, for example, while they were doing a, an election, the recent concluded election in the US, they were still doing a referendum. Part of the question on the, on the ballot was that it was a constitutional amendment. Mm. Even in times of a, a corona pandemic, they were still uh, doing a, a constitutional amendment. Last year I was in Romania, what they were, what they were uh, changing their constitution, and the whole country was voting in right. the referendum, was just a small sentence, a small clause that said marriage is between two people. Ah, now, now that one gives allowance for homosexuality and gayism. So they were changing to say marriage is between two people of opposite sex. That mm -hmm. one alone took them to a referendum. Okay. You know, just to amend one clause. So amendments of a constitution that does not work for the people, it is a continue, it is provided for a democracy. Mm -hmm. And if we accept a democratic nation, then we need to bear with the cost that comes with it. Okay. Honorable well, Hamisi, there are those who feel that actually, as you've pointed out, what's happening in the U.S., that perhaps we should just couple this with the upcoming uh, 2022 election. What say you? It's not possible because some of the proposals in the document mm -hmm. uh, must be uh, uh, implemented immediately yes now you cannot send people to the ballot and yet you are uh, uh, there is a proposal that members of parliament uh, will also uh, be in the executive um, uh, that is something that is also going to have a lot of uh, 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 you know uh, ramifications when you go to the ballot without one having been sorted now, this constitution, once it is passed, it's supposed to be implemented immediately. You cannot implement it after now another five years to come. So you must, by the time you are going to the ballot, you must have passed it so that some of, the, some of what is going to be on the ballot, like the, the, the proposition on mm. the governors to have a deputy who is a yes. woman. Yes. So how will, how will that governor who has gone through the ballot, who had a, a, a man as his deputy, going to change now, the mm -hmm. motion has changed, mm -hmm. now you are going to drop your, your man as deputy to get a woman. Mm -hmm. What will inform that? Yeah. So it, it, it has no provisions that uh, will uh, make it possible for it to be held at the same time with the election. Okay. Mr. Mkwanza, let's talk about cost. What's, what's your take on that? Yeah, on, on the issue of the cost, mm. um, the word corruption is key. And you have to appreciate that in this country, corruption is budgeted for. And if you want an answer on the cost of elections in this country, read the auditor's report. There is an extensive report on the on the IEBC budget of 2017. Right. And, and the answer lies in there. On the contrary, we have listened to the points of view from IEBC as well. And it's not just an internal problem. Uh, you realize that the IEBC has to really engage in very serious expenses. And, and somehow there is collusion on the side from the service provider's point of view. Mm -hmm. And a vehicle costs, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 shillings for, 
a day to hire, uh, you get farms colluding and, and raising to about 25,000 shillings. Whether it is, uh, you know, the, the service providers that are colluding by themselves mm. uh, to raise the stakes and, and make money, or there, is also, there are also elements within IABC uh, that uh, give these hints so that this, the, the figures can skyrocket. It is something that as Kenyans we need to have a conversation, not just about how much it has cost previously, but why are our elections very expensive? And the answer lies in our audit reports. Mm -hmm. The answer lies the fact that we budget for corruption in this country. Until we have that honest conversation on how our cost by water is so high, we will not be able to lower, uh, you know, um, the, the issues regarding uh, the cost of election. That is a, a role, a, a totally different conversation we need to have. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and what we like about uh, some aspects that I like about the, I, the you know, the, the, the BBI report is looking not just into the cost of elections, but also the cost of doing politics in this country. Right. Uh, it's impossible to have uh, the politicians investing millions of shillings to get elected, investing millions of shillings to get their position supported, like in the current dispensation. Uh, of, of looking at uh, in the current discourse of discussing BPI and expect that they don't want to earn dividends, you know, at some point. And that is why we are very clear, very clear on this. It is, the referendum is merely a decoy. The issue is about how to take control, how to take charge of the elections in 2022, and how to gain power uh, thereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest, we have to be very keen as Kenyans to ensure that the things that concern us, you know, that the, the reforms uh, that promote socio-economic uh, well-being of, of, of Kenyans, uh, the making sure that whatever the results come out of this political process or called the referendum, we are not disunited. We are socially cohesive, and okay. we are not going back to the challenges of of, of, of post-election violence that have, you know, been since 1992 uh, all the way to 2007. Oh. And, and this up in 2017. Okay, now in, as far as corruption is concerned, what is civil society practically doing at this point in time to keep a keen eye and ensure that corruption is not happening as it has been happening several over and over uh, in the past? With regards to our democratic processes, that is. You know, as, as I said, corruption is budgeted for, and, and you have to look at it. And, and uh, the role of the civil society is to mainly draw attention to these facts and, and lobby members of parliament, like Honorable Missy, that mm. sit in this committee, uh, to be able to do uh, their role. The challenge that we have is that we have elected leaders uh, that are entertaining executive overage. If okay. you look at the concept of CDF, it challenges, you know, uh, the, the ability of the member of parliament. You know, it's an executive overage, um, and, and it's an legislative overage as well, because the role of an MP is, is to oversight. Now, when you're given executive functions to, to, to run programs, run projects that with a budget, what, what exactly is that? I know they have come up with some structure uh, that uh, makes them merely patrons, mm -hmm. but what is the honest level of influence that an MP has uh, in the utilization of, of, of the CDF uh, money. And, and, and how does this affect uh, their oversight role? I have seen again they have provided for the World Development Fund. It is the same thing. You know, uh, what, what is going to happen in terms of separation of powers when we want MPs uh, to become cabinet ministers and, and all this? So you have a budget running in the ministry. You also have CD on the other end. The MCA is, uh, you know, um, the MCA is, is, is a member of, of the county assembly doing oversight on the one end and also a CEC and also has, has a budget as a CEC and then has a budget as a World Development Fund. All this overage is, is, is not uh, helpful because it, 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 it makes it difficult for the various officers to be accountable. And I think we have to draw attention to these inconsistencies. Uh, to ensure that uh, the public sector is cleaned up in a way that you can be able to say, okay, fine, and uh, this is you are clearly the market responsibility. Yes. And if you limit it this way, then you can be able to uh, do your role. They will also require the political goodwill uh, mm. to be able to fight corruption. Okay. Uh, cases are handled in a way that we can see uh, their political connotations in it. Mm. That does not 
confidence. We need to see commitment at the highest level because impunity, uh, disregard for the rule of law at the highest levels, does not encourage Kenyans uh, to be part of uh, this uh, important fight uh, to, to, to deal with corruption in the country. Okay, Honorable Mr. Like to your comment on that as you're closing, as we close. Honorable Hamisi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, and and I think um, that. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, um, in in regard to the members of parliament uh, still uh, having an oversight role to the CDF funds, mm -hmm. I think this was an act of parliament, uh, and um, it was passed to enable funds run from the central government all the way to the grassroots, and this was part of the decentralisation of uh, funds to make sure that the local Mwanainchi um, is able to get uh, services. And uh, when we decentralize even further to the world level, I think it is a plus. That was uh, the essence, that was the tenets of democracy, I mean, uh, the tenets of devolution. So it is, you can just go around the country and uh, see how we, uh, Kenyans are happy and they counted with the devolution as it uh, as it came in. So when you devolve more, you are actually making sure that the resources are actually going to the lowest units of administration as possible. So to me, that is a plus. It is uh, one of the most, if you if you go across the, the continent, you'll find Kenya having one of the most progressive uh, devolution structures. And this is going to even put us at a, at a higher a pedestal in terms of uh, devolution and how we have uh, been able to structure it. So some of these provisions, if you ask the common one, and will tell you it are actually very important. Okay. If you look at the, the members of parliament coming from, I mean, the members of the ex executive being also members of parliament, it's going to reduce. You remember, they're not going to draw salaries as, as, as ministers. They are only going to retain their salary as members of parliament that is going to reduce the cost that we pay the members of the executive. And also, it also comes with the representation mantle because remember people, uh, uh, there are members of the executive who do not have the powers of uh, 190, that they are not representing anyone. They do not know what the common 190 goes through. A member of parliament who is representing people serving in the executive is able to give policies that are in line with the cries and the, 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 the views and the agenda of his people because he's been voted in, he represents Wanainji, he knows exactly where it pays the common Wanainji. So I think those are some of the progressive things that do not need time. They are very urgent, it needs to be done now, mm -hmm. the signatures need to start immediately. Okay, uh, Honorable uh, Hamisi is the member of parliament, Caleb Hamisi is the member of parliament for Saboti. Franklin Mkwanja is the CMD executive director. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being a part of this conversation. Um, we are going to take a break, but on the other side, we shall be looking at the Transport Licensing Appeals Board, get, get you information on what it is all about, and of course, why you need to be interested in what they could do for you. Let's take a short break and come back with that. This is KTN News. for 1,499 shillings or a satellite dish for only 2,999 shillings. Keep the kids home, safe and entertained.
week on the Great Kenyan Bake Off. The margins for error are getting thinner. It's patisserie week and the semi-final for this season of the Great Kenyan Bake Off. Only three will make it to the final. This is called panic. Watch as the bakers try to perfect a challenging technical that will see some start over and leave some deflated. It's not come out right. Don't miss the tension in the dramatic penultimate signature challenge where three will stand while one will fall apart and leave the tent. It's about to go. The Great Kenyan Bake Off brought to you by Unga Limited, inspiring a nation to bake. Majaribu ni kawaida maishani. Hatujaribiwi ili unyonge wetu uonekane ila tuweze kugundua nguvu zetu. Kwa kila wingu la majaribu kunayo hazina. Iwa